Rafael. Uh, good evening. I'm Julia Tulovsky. I'm curator for Russian and Soviet nonconformist art here at the Zimmerl Art Museum. And I'm also curator of the exhibition Comer and Melamid, a lesson in history, which we see around us. And today is a very special night. We have very special guest, the artist Vitaly Komer and Alexander Melamid. And um, we are very much honored to have them. I think they are uh, some of the most innovative, provoking, brave, and fun artists that I ever uh, had the fortune to work with. And uh, they met in uh, Moscow in the Stroganov Institute, I believe, and uh, started work, uh, to work together in 1972 with the invention of highly influential style thoughts art. And then they immigrated to the United States in 1978. We immigrated to Israel first, and then to the United States, yeah. Yes. 77, we left, uh, 70, and 77, we left Moscow, and 78, we were on 33rd and 3rd Street, I mean, the 3rd <laughs> Avenue in Manhattan. <laughs> and, and I heard it was very um, difficult to explain at first the, your address to the taxi drivers, <laughs> because in Russian, there is no uh, sound. <laughs> I had a couple of lessons before I left Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we left uh, Moscow at the end, very end of 1977, because Alex got permission uh, early, and he was uh, in Jerusalem already, and I still waiting for my permission to the end of the year. Yes, and, and then you arrived in New York in the 70s, uh, 78, 78. Mm -hmm. and uh, made uh, an astonishing career. You see the exhibition um, equipped with quotations from major publications uh, that uh, Comer and Melamid, uh, you know. They're all dead already. About the writers <laughs> already all dead. <laughs> Kay Larson was a brilliant lady, yeah. Yes. Uh, no, but they're dead. It's a privilege of being old. A lot of people you know are dead. That really <laughs> makes you some uh, impetus to go further. I'm, I'm older than Alex. I'm 80. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Nice to be 80. We're children of the war, 1945-1943. But coming back to your uh, youth, uh, uh, how did you it's, begin? It's impossible to come oh, back to come our... <laughs> Uh, you began to collaborate in 1972, so how, how did you start working together? You know, shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, studied art, uh, we studied art in the same class. And, uh, you know, uh, Moscow Bohemian Circle tried to have a lifestyle like Paris of 19th century, and drink, we, we drink a lot as a heavy, we were heavy drunkards, drinkers. Uh, we consume a lot of uh, hard liquors, much more than um, Van Gogh or Modigliani. Uh, <laughs> and we started our collaboration, when we drank, we start to discuss some ideas, exchange ideas. In, 90, in 1995, I stopped the drink hard liquors, and gradually we stop our collaboration. <laughs> yeah, we're drinking a lot, we're drinking a lot, yeah. And uh, what distinguished your collaboration from other such couples like Gilbert and George, or Dolce and Gabbana, and what kind of advantage? I think vodka, vodka. Vodka? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey man, how Hello, are you? Hello, Wayne. Hey. <laughs> Didn't expect to see you. Just flew from New York. And uh, what, uh, when you started to, to collaborate, it seems that your uh, collective was quite different from uh, other um, artists that were working in the Soviet Union uh, back then. What? Um, did you have, a, was there any advantage of working together? You know, the what part of it? us, because we hated art. 
really. And what was, uh, and I still are coming back, you know. I think it's the most ridiculous, idiotic endeavor that humans ever went into. Art is really is a total nonsense, idiotic kind of, uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure why people are doing this. When they start to analyze and think about this, it, what the hell is that? <laughs> why people are doing this, you know, this kind of, what is this for, you know? Why, why does it exist, you know? I think our collaboration represents love-hate relation. It's kind of two-party system. <laughs> <laughs> but it's truly, you know, it's a really, we need to think hard about what art represents, you know. It's not just senseless. I think it's menace. It's a menace. It's really dangerous. Because, I mean, it's, uh, it takes our minds, you know, for a ride, you know. And it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, I mean, it's an intellectual pollution. That's what I'm saying, you know. Yeah. It pollutes the, uh, our minds, you know, because our minds are very limited and they need some focus, you know, I mean, because we cannot think about, and when we concentrate on art, you know, so it's like, you know, medieval, uh, you know, people in the church were thinking about, uh, and it's a lot of great thinking went into this uh, theology. And then, well, now you read and say, what the, what the fuck they were talking about? Why did they use their brain power to talk about this nonsense, you know? Because it's nonsense to begin with, you know? And of course, in any, if, if you start to think about something, you find something. Doesn't <laughs> matter, it can be, uh, you know, white wall or black wall. I mean, I mean we create uh, ideas, you know, looking at anything, you know. But why art is needed, I don't understand. We can think about this floor and we'll uh, have this uh, great ideas and... and uh, why did you choose to be an artist in the first place? It was a, a, a mistake, you know, because I was raised in a <laughs> religious society and the religion of uh, Soviet Union was art. In oh, every, really? I mean, music, you know, like oh. Bam Bram Bam Shostakovich, for example, you know. Was this it? This was a really great socialist realist, of course, but uh, otherwise, you know, we believed in this. It was, as I said, because in a way, you know, it was the first country when uh, a kind of a normal, a traditional European religious life was replaced by uh, uh, the art religion. Was it art religion or communist religion? Uh, no, 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 was it, no, no, communist, no. At, at that time already when we grew up, you know, communism, you know, nobody really took it seriously, you know I mean? Uh, uh, so it was just, uh, but, uh, but art was this, you know, in every, you have to notice that every, like, authoritarian regime cares about art and instill the idea of that art is great and it's needed. The thing is, of course, that they have their own idea what art is, but uh, it doesn't matter. So that's, that's what keeps this regime. Stalin, Lenin, you know, with this. It's, it's, that was the most important part of this. Uh, but that, that's a very interesting point, because uh, art in the Soviet Union was restricted to socialist realism, and you say it was no, no, religious. No, no, socialist realism is a word that never existed. You know, it, uh, um, you know once, uh, that, that the legend says that someone approaches Stalin and a big, one of the big parties, you know, communists, and asks, you know, writer said, oh, Yosef Vissarionovich, what do you think, what, what exactly is socialist realism, what, what should we write? And said, write the truth. See? And uh, social <laughs> realism, I mean, and that's what it is. Nobody knew it, you know. Uh, social realism is the style of the 30s and the 40s, all over Europe. If you go to France, Bel Belgium was a major, maybe, power. All the workers, you know, you see it, you know, everywhere. And uh, Rockefeller Center, you know, and everywhere. That was the style, which they continue. Now it's, it's a Stalinist style. There's no, I wish Stalin created a style, but he didn't. <laughs> So, so the, really the, um, the, um, the status of religion, religious art was really assigned to kind of non -con what is called non-conformist art and music inside. No, no, but it was, of course, you know, it's like in every art, in every religious movement, there's sects appeared, you know, mm -hmm. always, you know, mm -hmm. like small uh, sects of fanatics, you know, and mm -hmm. 
I, we knew them, of course, like Weisberg, you know, like Sitnikov, you know, and there some, some people was a circle exactly like medieval sect, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. heretical, you know, kind of, uh, uh, and uh, the heretics always win, as you know. Always. Oh, so you became the, the, the sect of heretics. <laughs> yeah, but that's <laughs> not heretic. I mean, that's not, it's, it's uh, mainstream now, you know. Excuse me, Yule, uh, please, if you uh, have a personal question, yes. because sometimes I don't understand you asking Alex. Or right, me. yes, of course, okay. of course. Uh, but you, you also started with this um, grand invention, uh, with your collaboration right away in 72. You invented the thoughts art style which became highly influential, and not only in the non-conformist art, but uh, internationally all over the world. For example, Chinese contemporary art dwells on the same principle. And what I understand, uh, this principle is uh, a combination of uh, uncombinable things. Uh, for example, socialist uh, realism, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. So it's art was the combination of uh, uh, Soviet uh, propaganda with the uh, personal uh, life and you know kind of personal reflections like in the portraits of uh, family members written in Soviet monumental style and then you applied um, the same method uh, the same principle but on a different uh, stylistic possibilities. For example, um, there is a style of anarchic synthesis which combines uh, different styles of uh, expressionism and realism and such. Um, and my understanding is, this, is this what you called, uh, maybe I, I can ask Vitaly now, is this what you called conceptual eclectic, the method of conceptual eclectic? And is this something that is underlying your art kind of throughout or is it, or, uh, did they, uh, or is it different? Uh, life itself is the conceptual eclecticism because eclectic play a role of synthesis in today. For example, look at this uh, trio or trinity, uh, Churchill, uh, Roosevelt and Stalin. is a completely eclecticism, it's kind of triptych. Uh, I was shocked when I saw first time photograph of Yalta conference. Because one of them, let's say, the servant of monarchy. Second, democratically elected president. And third is a bloody dictator. And they're together. What combined them? What united them? Uh, common enemy, Hitler. Uh, and um, I feel myself sometimes not a triptych, but let's say diptych. Because my father was Ukrainian and growing in Christian tradition, and mother a Jew and growing in a different tradition, uh, religion. <clears throat> and uh, you speaking about contradiction of the lives. It's a quite absurd, absurd combination of two different religions, for example. Uh, of course, they have a lot of in, com in common, um, let's say. But if you look carefully around, maybe we are still exist yet before nuclear war, because we have in our mind conceptual eclectic. We believe in many different things. We believe in, for example, Darwin theory, and we believe in Bible, uh, or, uh, Bible um, in, um, information about creation of the man. Uh, and we believe in both. I don't know how it's in our mind peacefully coexist, because a lot of different, it's the same thing with art history. Art history for me is a huge, long, long polyptych, like that work which we done for document of eight. Uh, we were first Russian artists invited for document. For example, you see the icon and Russian constructivism. It's, uh, we've, we started uh, this transit period from thoughts art to eclecticism in 1973. That's in some way we were pioneers of the uh, eclectic of postmodernity. Did this work a biography of a contemporary? Yes, that? biography of contemporary. They represented in this show. Yes. I'm glad that this happened. Uh, <coughs> and uh, 
we can imagine any kind of life, like kind of um, sli slides, line of slides. Biography of contemporary done on the small circles, like slide side. Uh, and this is much bigger side, sl squares. M many people commented this biography of a contemporary resembled domino. I don't know if you had in this in mind, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, how you, you build this line with a little bit of a um, sides. No, it was bought, you know, this uh, small things were bought in a, uh, uh, a, jet, ski a, a jet ski mirror. Yeah, yeah, right. Because it's really interesting that the whole modernism is based on the idea of the cult of uh, youth or on, on, uh, childhood. You know, like, uh, it's like a naive, always naive, you know, which means that you're honest and uh, uh, like, you know, of course, uh, Sait Wombly is a good example, you know, and, but everyone there, you know, because Picasso said, I uh, studied three years to draw like anger, but uh, I have to spend years and years to study and to find out how to paint like a child. And that's what's, uh, Modernism is for children, you know, and uh, uh, for angry children, you know, badly behaved children, but it's always like that, like Dada. Dada is like a children pranks, you know, of, uh, of a child. And uh, it's still now, you know, it's all these paintings are done, you know, on a big scale, but by a child hand. Uh, and. Uh, that's why we have the problems because it's very good you said about Picasso. It's, it, it's <laughs> a good example because Picasso really changed style. We also changed style, but we did something very small, maybe step in art history. But it's but it's very important step. Picasso never met the diptych, for example, or triptych from his different periods. He never met the diptych of his cubism and his neoclassicism. Mm -hmm. Without distance, combine them together. We did it in first time in 1972-73. Uh, it was not very big progress, but it's something which nobody did before, stylistically, because different style is a kind of, uh, even art history, it's, a, it's maybe not style, it's intonation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I can say apple with intonation of Cezanne. I can say apple with intonation of photography. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, with Matisse intonation, um, I don't like to term style. It's a dictionary of intonation art history in some way, uh, and uh, it was uh, for me one most mysterious thing was in in museums. It's the empty distance between paintings, between work. You see, what is this? Is it design or what is this? Idea of architecture. If you visit, if you visit a retrospective show, it means uh, in uh, all works of artists in chronological order, the empty wall between two paintings or graphic doesn't matter, between two works, mean that artist for me, mean, uh, was maybe sitting in bar between these two paintings. <laughs> That or making love, or, or something, drinking something. Drinking vodka for it's a symbol. <laughs> yes, it's symbol. It's symbol of something else. And when you combine two paintings without distance, for example, can you imagine show the Soviet political poster with Byzantine icons without distance? Such a show, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. such a diptych example of icon, Christian icon and political communist po poster. It could be a kind of time bomb because you eliminated this image of the time between creation of different works. Empty wall is a symbol, I think, maybe I'm wrong. It's very personal. It's a symbol of time between creation of the work. Hmm. Well, that's a very uh, interesting uh, concept. Uh, but also, um, you know, um, in your... Uh, uh, time in the Soviet Union, um, in this you you were working there for five years only, and uh, you created a fantastic plethora of uh, different styles, and you had this idea of. You know, the point is, I think that uh, like every 
uh, as Andy Warhol said that uh, every artist is famous for 15 minutes. Everyone knows this. <laughs> but I think every artist is a genius for 15 minutes. I have looked uh, in some unknown artists and their works, and I always find a work which is brilliant, totally unknown and stuff like that. So we, and that was our 15 minutes of brilliance. What, what we did in Russia, and right after that. That was like, I mean, we got lucky that our brilliance connected us through Feldman to the life uh, and the United States. But uh, that's what, uh, that's the brilliance of uh, every artist's life. Some are lucky, they can show it right away, and some are not lucky, but we got lucky, yeah. From that, I have actually two questions. Um, first one is that uh, your art, um, that you created uh, is very cosmopolitan, like very, very open, uh, very much, you know, um, in connection with everything that was going on and even kind of anticipating what was going on in the global art. And uh, yet it was created in very restrictive conditions from what I understand of the Soviet Union uh, with uh, what I understand quite a few, uh, uh, like lack of information about uh, what it was helps. going on. It helps. Lack of information oh, helps yes. a lot. Yeah, yes, yeah, that yeah, was absolutely. my question. How, how does it help? Okay. What did you know, what you didn't know, and how? No, because we're free, because we're not, uh, I mean, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of locked up in uh, certain ideas and stuff like that. We were free birds, you know, and here, unfortunately, oops, and here, unfortunately, our um, freedom ended because we got into this uh, uh, milieu of uh, New York artists and we lost our freedom, of course. Oh. Because, I mean, only idiots can be free. You know? <laughs> Smart people are not free. They belong to a circle, to, to, I mean, they live according to the rules and stuff like that. So, and uh, America ended our, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, guys, but uh, my, uh, it's the birthday of my granddaughter, okay? Mm. I'm sorry, I have to leave you for a second, yeah. Uh, I, I can continue the yes. uh, idea of uh, freedom or not freedom uh, in uh, contemporary uh, art market, let's say. Uh, because uh, Ronald Feldman, who represents us since 1976, uh, he was a unique gallery. Uh, he, I don't know how he managed it. Uh, he combined uh, commercial success with kind of not profit um, program of artists mm -hmm. which he represent. Qu uh, quite not commercially looking even. Uh, it was big skill actually for him. He passed away uh, beginning of this year. And in some way, uh, Alex and me were in search of um, another representative place. But anyway, uh, I think uh, we know what, what, what ruling this world. Uh, ancient Greek Pythagore said, numbers ruling war. Christianity said, love ruling war, world. But what ruling art world? And I think the same thing, numbers in form of, in form of auction, mm -hmm. in, well, form of, about, yes. uh, form, in form of prices of paintings and art in auction. And what is the love in art market? Passion of collectors. It's only, it's a complete, it's, it's kind of love and kind of numbers. And they're ruling art world. And we became part of this. And that- uh, It was not in Soviet Union. Compromised your, your, your freedom. It's not compromise, it's just in other rules of game mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. in other rules of life, and, um, you know, professional life, I mean. You um, had uh, two exhibitions at uh, New York uh, before you even arrived uh, to America in 1976 and 77. You were probably the first uh, artist of non conformist circles to be represented like this in New York and for a long time probably the only ones who had a gallery. And um, 
uh, there was, the shows were reviewed in the New York Times and I read somewhere that they were even, um, police and horses had to be summoned uh, to control the crowds who wanted to see your exhibitions. I don't know if it's true or not. But how did this collaboration with Feldman uh, begin? And, uh, he never, he never asked us what to do. He never can cancel some work which you brought to his gallery. Never, never happened. So he gave you complete freedom to Absolutely. whatever you Absolutely. Sometimes to I tell you a secret, he didn't even saw this work in our studio. We just bring it to gallery and he hang it. Oh, that's a great... But he was a great installator. He always found the best way to represent different works. Yes. He was a, you know, I think he was an amazing uh, person, an amazing gallery. I think so, yes. I think so. Yes. Well, we, we missed him. She was ill, um, heavily ill for two years, and he passed away this year, beginning of this year. And so uh, what uh, was the first project uh, that you did when you came to America, and uh, what do you think were your most successful projects uh, in, here in the United States? It's difficult to say because uh, I had a... I had uh, two sons, for example. One of them passed away, another still alive, my stepson. And I can say whom I love more. And in some way, all this work is a kind of children, uh, let's say. But I think the first, um, uh, one of your first projects when you came to America was uh, the Soul Project. The trust, they created a trust uh, that would be buy oh, yes, and yeah. sell souls. It was a parody on our favorite gallery, Ronald Feldman. It was an interesting experience. I never had the knowledge about uh, secret life of the galleries. Uh, gal you bring to gallery absolutely complete ready product. They show it on the white, clean wall, like, uh, and uh, after that, in case of sale, gallery took 50%. In, in Russian terminology, uh, artist put his soul in work. In, uh, in, in English, you can say he put his, his or her heart in work or something like that. Uh, and it's very interesting. That means in some way we sailing part of our soul. And we're in context of the famous uh, legend about Faust and Mephistophel mm -hmm. by Goethe. Yes. And we decide to make our corporation to buy and sell human souls around. And they were famous people who sold you their souls to you. Andy Warhol. Uh, Andy Warhol was represented by uh, Ronald Feldman as well. Uh, and he, um, he sold his soul for zero, actually. Uh, uh, maybe it was the first transaction, I don't know. Uh, anyway, um, but you know, we were, uh, it was very difficult just to by soul, uh, and we decide to put in art forum contract, a red piece of paper about soul on commission. Mm -hmm. And after that, in, in the back side was our address in 33rd Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we got hundreds and hundreds of souls on commission from all around the world. Uh, and people usually ask, uh, something like half a million, no less. Somebody asking a few millions. And in this case, we must to sell it twice mm -hmm. more expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was really difficult and because a lot of people like to sell their souls, but nobody buy it. Nobody wanted to buy. Uh, uh, <laughs> so you had to close the, the, the business? We closed the business not only by this reason, uh, we received a uh, letter from one theologist, uh, 
one priest. He said, according to the law of each Western kind of country, nobody can sell something which not belong to him or her. And to support his, uh, his thought, he made quotation of, from the Bible, mm -hmm. from the Old Testament, I mean, from the Torah, uh, and said, all souls are my, the soul of the son and soul of the father. That means nobody can sell something which not belong to him. Our soul not belong to us. That he said, all uh, your business is a fake. <laughs> and I, I took my translation of the Goethe, uh, Faust, and read carefully and and I understood that Goethe understood this, because in the end of the show, in the end of the book, nobody remembered that angels took soul of the Faust from the Mephistopheles. Mm -hmm. That means it's not belong to right. uh, to us. Yes. Of course, it's a kind of terminological uh, legend, but anyway, uh, it was an important reason to close the business, and we are out of business. Now it's in collection of, uh, in collection of um, Pompidou Center, all, all documentation yes. of corporation. But you also your other uh, famous uh, uh, projects in the United States is uh, the nostalgic socialist realism and people's choice when you uh, engaged a sociological. Uh, you know, research to create most wanted and most unwanted painting. And uh, uh, we have uh, some uh, sketches for this project here. And by the way, on uh, June 11, we will have a concert here in this room that will um, recreate uh, people's choice music. So you, uh, I'm, uh, please save the date and uh, it will be very interesting, I think. And uh, maybe, you, Vitaly, you can say a couple of uh, words about this project. Uh, it depends on what you like to know. If you like to beginning of the project, uh, it, it uh, concept was born even in Moscow, because after academic Sakharov, famous dissident, visit us, he enjoyed our work, and we had a lot of compliments of him, from him. But um, uh, another person also from this dissident circle, he hated. And we discuss after they left our studio, we discuss idea to uh, create different works for different circle of society. Mm -hmm. But you know how to do it. A statistic was state secret in Soviet Union. It's not everybody understand the level of secrecy in Soviet Union. When before Bolsheviks was got power, there was secret society which combined legal and terrorist method of the activity. And when they came to power, they have no experience of governor, for example, as in the United States president. They had the experience how to rule secret society. And they transform all country to enormous big secret society with money of secrecy. And statistic was secret, big state secret. How you can make such a research? It's not here. It was different, uh, and uh, of course, it was difficult to divide uh, American society for very small, in, uh, clear segment. Segment. Uh, that's why we decide finally. It was work in collaboration. Actually, it was the third important collaborator, uh, Paul companies, because they're professionally doing so. We found the sponsor. I, I believe it was cost $50,000, make uh, survey, mm -hmm. um, scientifically arranged by survey to create the questionnaire. And we took f f highest numbers mm -hmm. and lowest numbers. It was the highest number, it was kind of most wanted painting. It's a parody on the populism, let's say. Uh, and uh, low, it was a kind of parody on elitism. 
because it's my minority. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Minority usually like abstract painting in geometrical forms and um, um, orange, maybe it's color of fire. It's le less, it, le least, least wanted color I, and black. I think except for Holland, which, except Holland. which, which is an amazing exception. That's which, true. Uh, and Italy, in Italy, Italy also. Yes, yes, Italy, yes. majority prefer um, imaginary figures and landscape. Yes. Uh, maybe because Holland and Italy country which associated art as a part of their history. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. it's uh, just, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, feeling uh, suggestion. Uh, it's, it's difficult to explain uh, why it so happened. But it's an interesting fact that, that not all countries really prefer realistic painting as their, their favorite. Some exceptions. And uh, this, this was a very important, I think, uh, result uh, soci also, sociologically speaking. Right. Uh, but, you know, the exhibition um, is called The Lesson in History and um, uh, because I think that your art is incredibly relevant uh, to today's um, agenda, um, which deals with the, you know, questions of politics, totalitarian state, how to deal with it, how to parody it, how to deconstruct it with humor. Um, and uh, um, do you feel this way also? And what do you think, how do you think your past reflections uh, resonate today in our world? Might be a loaded question, I understand. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's difficult to say really. Uh, can you put this question in a little bit short form? <laughs> Maybe three words or four words. Um, you know, a lot of your reflections uh, and, uh, in, in ideas in art are um, very relevant, in my view, in my curatorial view, to, to today's um, situation, to today's situation in politics, to today's situation in art. And uh, do you uh, have any comments on this observation? Yes, if it's related to your personal feeling. For example, when uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine started, I immediately remember my personal experience in New York City because in some way uh, uh, we were already bombed, uh, I mean 9-11. Uh, it was a tragedy and it doesn't matter what kind of bomb in form of plane or in form of uh, another uh, sh shells, etc. Uh, but it was an uh, aggression, act of aggression and bombing. That's, that's mean, uh, it, when I saw the photograph of the um, uh, destruction of the Ukrainian uh, uh, cities, I remember 9-11, uh, because our, um, Alex in my studio was in, very close to this building. Even uh, city pay us some compensation because during the 10 days, we were no cut from mm -hmm. visiting our business, our studio. We couldn't c continue. And they sent us a check. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but sometimes it must to relate to something your personal, uh, in this case. Because, uh, you know, we difficult to say what make uh, progress in art, so calling progress. What's make artists change? What's make art history change? Uh, paradoxically, I think, all modern art appear as a retrospective point of view because it was century of archaeological discoveries. Since Napoleon visit uh, Egypt, mm -hmm. we academic artists who was sure, 100% sure what is good art and what is bad art. It was based on the uh, Renaissance uh, achievements, um, is Renaissance masterpieces achievement. And they thought they know what is good art, what is bad art, etc. But suddenly they see different criterias exist in ancient Egypt or discovery of archaeology in 
Крита Микен, Крита Микен цивилизейшн, ор Этруск цивилизейшн, и Сматис, ор Дискавери оф Эрли, Эрли тайп оф хюмен сосайти фром Африка. Это also кубистик, инфлюенсит кубист. That's a paradoxical. Even Karl Marx said about early communism, which was at the beginning of uh, our, uh, our human society. It, in some way, all modern art was born as a reflection of the past. Uh, it was ancient, uh, ancient uh, because people understood uh, that different criteria exist, not only Renaissance. Uh, criteria so by, reflect of academy, uh, criteria. by reflecting on the past, uh, art and your art also kind of anticipates uh, the future in a way. I, I, one can say so. Yeah. Nobody can predict future, yes. Uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, I think we, we now it's down time to open uh, the, um, the floor for questions uh, from the audience. Uh, uh, <laughs> published its first list of authentic living Buddhas, the oh. Chinese government, yes, <laughs> saying that growing numbers of fraudulent Buddhas are using their status to swindle money from believers. <laughs> How do you like that, huh? Authentic Buddhas, and we're authentic artists, and there's a lot of swindlers, swindlers around the area. Alex, would you please come back because I think we, we, we might have some. I know you missed me. Yes, we missed you. Yes, I know. Uh, I said that we, ne we never resale any kind of these souls. Even, even the work of uh, all, all good documentation which was now, uh, which now in Pompidou Center, it was donation from Ronald Feldman Gallery because uh, nobody buy this project. But wasn't this in auction in Moscow? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Right. Did you get your 50% for yeah. the soul? We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you the know? money go? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> for military campaign in Ukraine, I suppose. <laughs> No, I believe they <laughs> bought a uh, box of vodka. <laughs> oh, guys, but don't forget this amazing truth about art, you know, that it's, it's a fraud, okay? And we need to live and we have to rethink about uh, what, uh, what art is and think about this. Because, you know, I've noticed in my life that very simple things which we we'll take for granted turn out to be nonsensical and absolutely not true. But uh, it's an illusion of uh, uh, wisdom and, uh, and uh, whatever, you know, uh, pacifying your soul or something like that, you know, take some, get some good profession, you know, plumbers, you know. I had a project, you know, about the plumbing school for artists, you know, because you know, at least the <laughs> shit goes right away, you know, but here it just accumulates, you know, and... and it's uh, very Socra uh, Socratic of you, you know, like, <laughs> to, to, <laughs> with all the experience to say that I know that I know nothing. <laughs> no, no, of course we know nothing, you know, that's for sure. And but, uh, it's, uh, I'm an artist, but art is... is no, no, I mean, I, I mean, people make mistakes, mistakes in their lives, you know. Someone, you know, some joined the Communist Party and some joined the art world, you know, so, but it's we both have, wrong. I have a question from the audience. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. I have a question about your very early years. How do you work together? Because I can see that your pictures are the idea first, like to apply the icon on the constructivism of Soviet kind of style and to depict the three leaders in such a different uh, different styles, because Stalin is real and the other two are not. Um, how do you work? Who came with the idea? Who came with the... It's about energy. You see, you, you saw this poster there. When we're making love, we can uh, charge our accumulator. I mean, just uh, a battery, okay? And that's very important, you know, to know about energy a lot, you know. So think about this, about this climate change and all these big things. You know. 
supply the energy to do the pictures, right? You just first come with the idea. So my question but is... But it's a lot of energy, you know, because your thinking that, is really... In is making love, it really generator? takes a lot of energy from you. Okay. Thank you. Wayne? Uh, Yeah. Talk a little bit about your relationship with her, that she represented you all, Ernst and Zviesky, Mitya Chemiak, and so many great Russian artists. So cool. She was a charming person, really. Yeah. At gallery, she represents only Russian artists, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She was a character, that's for sure. Yeah. Yes, I was fortunate to meet her, too. Yeah. We've known her for years, yeah. We have more questions, please. Uh, when you left the Soviet Union, did you have any paintings in your studio, and uh, did you take any of them with you when you emigrated? No, no, I was not allowed. My, most of my, all the paintings were smuggled out through the diplomatic sources and uh, some uh, foreign uh, uh, correspondence uh, in m m Moscow. And then it was no vi visible art, you know, like, uh, you know, this... Uh, uh, history of a contemporary was uh, uh, delivered to F Feldman Gallery in a candy box, you see. So, and there was nothing to, to I mean, there was, there was no tangible kind of pieces of art as it was understood by the authorities. So, it was easy to smuggle. And I heard that the um, uh, work, uh, ideological abstraction, that is coded freedom of speech of the Soviet Constitution was mistaken for a tablecloth by custom officers when uh, it was brought out of the country. Yeah, but not only, but, but the code which was, uh, you know, which we put in, uh, you know, and uh, it was uh, confiscated at the border. Oh, I say. Yeah, kind that of doesn't a... exist anymore. But <laughs> I, I reconstructed. Now it's in the show. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the original one was. But, but you mean probably Aroista language? No, no, no. Oh, this the, one. The, uh, the, the color the, Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that was. You remember it was a, a vape out. Yes, yes. And yes. I reconstructed because I had a, a stencil of, from this work. Yes. Oh, that's a. Every, it really doesn't matter. And first, you know, don't listen to artists, you know. Artists are <laughs> notoriously dumb p people, you know. And, and, and I actually, I collected uh, this artist statements for a long time, you know. I, I unfortunately, I don't have it here. It's really, it's a stupidity at its highest level. It just, I mean, it's, it's even genre in itself, you know. It's just, I mean, it's abstract prose, you know. It's modern kind of... A, it's the most ridiculous thing. We, we have to understand it's kind of a new literature. It's kind of a new, I mean, totally different, you know, overwhelming. And when you go to a gallery, take this, you know, whatever the, you know, this uh, Xerox, I mean, whatever, you know, there's uh, some papers they always have with the artist statement, with the statement of the gallery. It's amazing. It's really, you have to, you have to read it, you know, and many of them to understand the whole mess, you know, and, and, and totally incoherent. I mean, it just, it's brilliant in its own way, because, you know, not only good minds should be represented, but stupidity should be really well represented by, by, uh, by written materials, yeah. And Natasha? Vitaly uh, Anali. Now, when you split your ways, and now that we have like two new artists who were reborn, so what are your new aesthetic views for you, Vitaly, when you continue your career and for you, Alec? You know, we speak about uh, uh, um, uh, Alex, about me. Uh, actually, I like to, um, when we uh, speak about reason of why uh, we succeed because not many immigrants could succeed in the United States, particularly from Russia. I have to remember two names. We noticed, uh, we mentioned the people who helped to smuggling out our works in Europe uh, to the United States. But ask a very simple question. Okay, they smuggle this work out, but who represent this work to Feldman? 
And that's why I have to say about artists who already passed away, and he worked with, uh, with us in collaboration. It was one of the founder of the conceptual video art, Douglas Davis. He came to Moscow after a famous bulldozer show. Uh, Alex and me participated in a show of underground artists. Uh, somebody called us uh, unofficial artists or non-conformist artists, many, to, many terminological terms. Uh, and he was also not only artist, but uh, art critic of music magazine. Uh, and he visit all artists who participate because government destroy our works. Uh, it was open door show. Uh, you must understand that all galleries, all art press, all land, all banks, everything belonged to government in Soviet Union. And if you artists like uh, Alex and me, we couldn't show our works anywhere because all museum, everything. And we thought maybe air not belong to government, but we were wrong because government people appear and start to destroy uh, work of the, our friends. It was almost 12 us, I believe, or 13 maybe. Uh, and uh, uh, Douglas Davis came to write down the article about underground art. And he was a little bit uh, surprised that most of this artist was um, surrealism, surrealist or abstract expressionist of abstract Peter. geometry. Wow. Yes. But he saw conceptual artist first time. Only at this time we were conceptual artists possibly. Maybe it's not true, it was a few more, but they was not so um, on view. And he came to us and brought the fantastic bottle of the single malt whiskey. And we also opened the, our bottle of vodka. We drink a lot and speak about what's going on in this world. Next year was 75, Helsinki Watch, important meeting between uh, United States and Soviet Union leaders discuss freedom of immigration and freedom of human rights. Uh, it was very important. And during this, I don't remember details because I was very drunk at this time, moment. We, I don't remember what I say, what Alex say, what, uh, but we decide finally to reflect another important event in 1975, joint flight to, cost, to space of American and Russian astronauts together. It was first time. And we decided to be first Russian artist who met with Douglas Davis work in collaboration. Now it's, now it's work in here and in another copy in Metropolitan Museum collection. And Douglas Davis was artist of Ronald Feldman. And he helped to our friend who lo localized our smuggling work in his apartment. He represented to Feldman. He recommended to visit Feldman. And they came together. And Feldman was attracted. It was interesting. It, it, that's how started our uh, life, artistic life in the United States, thanks to Douglas Davis. He passed away. He was a very successful artist. I met him approximately two years before his passed away. Come on. Uh, uh, he was a moron, you know. Come on, you know. <laughs> no, I, uh, he was a very nice guy, but a total moron, you know. I mean, come okay. on. Okay. But anyway, I, I about another way. He was abs looks like a homeless person on the street. <laughs> he had uh, this basket, basket with his um, his I don't know what's happened. Maybe you want to drugs. Ask, okay. Maybe drugs problem. Yeah. Yeah. Ren, yeah. Go ahead. I can't remember whether it was Kundera or Philip Roth quoting Kundera or the other way around who talked about the difference between places where nothing goes and everything matters and places where everything goes and nothing matters. Right. And I want to ask you, Alex in particular, uh, the, tri the, 
the transit you have made from the bulldozer show to the claim that all art is fraudulent. Do you, do you think that the art in the bulldozer show was fraudulent and should have been destroyed? It's not fraudulent. I, I didn't. Well, you say said it was a fraud. You said it was a fraud. No, no, right. Yeah, but and, art and, is and, not fraud. The whole, the whole milieu is fraud. I mean, I no, understand. No, no, I understand. But was the art? Well, I'm asking you. When you were doing the art it in Russia, it was just uh, canvases or you know cardboards with some paint on it. Right. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> and and and, uh, and do you ha did it have a different kind of resonance? Yeah, some people. You know, we worked with the elephants for a long time. You yeah. know, in in know. Thailand and 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 Cambodia and some other countries. You know, and we realized that each elephant has a style, its own style, and it was a shock to us first. But you know, your, your trunk always goes, uh, it's your trunk, okay? <laughs> and it goes a certain way, you know? So that's, that's the difference. So some elephants paint it this way and some elephants paint it this way. So it's, I mean, everyone is in, an individual, of course, and the same, uh, you know, applies to people that we, you know. Uh, but, 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 I, but I wanna stick with you for a second. Was the making of art different for you? Were the stakes different? Were its alleged fraudulence different when you were working in Russia compared to when you work here? And, and we wanted to show, to show when we worked in Russia that all art around us is shit. It's terrible. Right. It's not, we didn't say that our art is better. No. But we say we want to show to people that it's nonsense. Absolute, because, but we believe in that time that somewhere else, beyond the borders, Hope exists the a, a art full of uh, sense, you know, full of meaning. When we came here, it took us a couple of years, some time to understand that the same nonsense. <laughs> it's absolute, there's no difference between, we say, social realism is bad. Why is it bad? I think social realism is much more reasonable because they want to, uh, kind of uh, glorify their leaders, I understand. But why do people do th what they're doing now? Why Frank Stella was doing this, you know, what, what the fuck is that? I'm sorry, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nonsense. It's a sheer, clear, undisputable nonsense. I you know what I'm saying? You know, I have this uh, uh, definition of art, hold on, uh, uh, of what art is. I have to find it, okay? Cancel, okay. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Art still is one of the most pervasive forms of modern superstition. As to the various for like, you know, the various forms of new age nonsense. You see, that's, that's what it is. And uh, hold on, hold on, another one. Yeah. Art is a heavy duty world of antiquated superstitions, hubris and avarice, and the snotty sentimentality. That what, you have to write it down, okay? <laughs> I think it's a great note to end this, <laughs> this session. I think we, we now might need a drink, and uh, it is served in the lobby, and there are some refreshments. And uh, there are catalogs available for sale, and I hope that Alec and uh, Vitaly would not refuse to sign a few copies. Oh, we will, we will. Oh, <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs>